All right, guys, this is a quick general overview of histology. So we're going to begin with epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue covers a majority of the body, uh, both internal and external body surfaces. Epithelial tissue is also found in glands, such as your sweat glands, and it functions primarily in transport, secretion, and protection. Now, epithelial tissue is interesting because it's characterized several ways. One way to characterize epithelial tissue is by shape. It can be cuboidal or cube-shaped. It can be squamous or flat. And then columnar-shaped is just rectangular and long. It can also be characterized by the number of layers. Simple is unilayered and stratified is multiple layers. And then there are other types of epithelial tissue that we'll uh, get to, such as pseudostratified and transitional. So we're going to go over each of the different types of epithelial tissue uh, one by one, where you can find them, how they look, and what they function in primarily. Beginning with simple squamous epithelium, simple squamous epithelium, uh, the functions in allowing passage of materials by diffusion because these cells are permeable. Now it's simple, so it's single layered, and it's squamous, so that's basically just a single layer of flat cells. And you can find these in capillaries, the alveoli of the lungs, the glomeruli of the kidney, the peritoneum, which is just the serous membrane lining the abdomen, and of course the outer layer of skin. Simple cuboidal epithelium functions in secretion and absorption. It's just a single layer of cube-shaped cells that are found in the surface of the ovaries. It also lines the nephrons and the renal tubules of the kidney. And you can find simple cuboidal epithelium in the eye and the thyroid gland. Make sure that as we go through these that you are looking at the, the microscope pictures of the different epithelial tissue types. Because in any exam, such as a practical exam, you're going to have to be able to identify the types of tissue that you see. Simple columnar epithelium is just a single layer of rectangular cells that function in absorption and secretion of mucus, enzymes, and other substances. Simple columnar epithelium lines most of the organs and particularly the digestive tract, so you can find this tissue in the stomach, the small intestine, your large intestine or colon, and also the gallbladder, which is just an accessory digestive tissue. It also lines the fallopian tubes and the uterus in the female reproductive system. There are two types of simple columnar epithelium. They're ciliated and non-ciliated. The pictures on the side are depicting ciliated uh, simple columnar epithelial tissue. Ciliated basically propels mucus, and in the case of the female reproductive system, the ciliated type propels the egg through the fallopian tube and into the uterus. The non-ciliated type aligns most of the GI tract, as well as the gallbladder and even the bronchi of the lungs. Next is stratified squamous epithelium. It's now stratified, so it's a multiple layer of flat, uh, flattened cells. Um, this particular tissue type functions in protecting tissues that are subject to abrasion. It's also layered upon a basement membrane. There are two types, non-keratinized or keratinized. Non-keratinized, in particular, keeps the body moist by secretions. You find this, for instance, in your oral cavity, in your esophagus, and the female vagina, and of course the mouth. Keratinized types protect the skin from abrasion. They're very strong and sturdy, right, because keratin just um, is a very uh, rigid and sturdy protein. You can find this in the palm of the hand and sole of your foot, and as well as the skin epidermis, which is the utmost, most superficial layer of skin. Next is stratified cuboidal epithelium. This is a multiple layer of cube-shaped cells that function in protection. You can find these in sweat glands, mammary glands, and even your salivary glands. Stratified columnar epithelium. This one's two or more layers of columnar cells, which are just those rectangular cells. These function in protection and secretion, and they're kind of rare throughout the body, but you can find them in the pharynx and the anus the female uterus, the male urethra, as well as the male vas deferens, which is just the duct that the sperm travels through before they get released out of the body. And then of course the salivary duct as well. 
Okay, so this is pseudostratified columnar epithelium that functions in secretion or propulsion of mucus by ciliary action. Pseudostratified is just this, the cells are shaped and positioned in such a way that they look like several layers of columnar cells, but they're not actually several layers of columnar cells. They're just a single layer that's been positioned and shaped in a certain way to appear as such. So that's why it's called pseudostratified columnar epithelium. There are several types, ciliated or non-ciliated. Non-ciliated is found in the vas deferens, which is in the male, and ciliated can be found in the trachea. Um, there's also stereocilia, which is just a mechanosensing gland that responds to fluid motion, and you can find this in the male epididymis, which is where sperm is stored after it had been nourished and produced in the testes. There's also transitional epithelium, this type of epithelium allows for distension of certain organs, and so you can find this, for instance, in the urinary bladder, which when it fills up with urine, right, the bladder is going to stretch, and then when it's emptied, it's going to contract. So it needs to have a particular type of tissue that can permit that distension of the organs. Transitional epithelium, it is stratified, and it can change the shape based on the amount of distension of that organ. You find this in most of your urinary organs, such as your ureter, urinary bladder, and the urethra, which the urethra is just the duct that the urine is going to be released out of the body through. Okay, so we're moving on to connective tissue. There are many connective tissue types. They are incredibly important because they support and bind tissues to the body. They're characterized, and this is a very important point, uh, connective tissues are characterized by cells that are embedded in an extracellular matrix. In epithelial tissue, all the cells are just packed together, but connective tissue has that extracellular matrix. Um, the tissue fibers and the matrix are synthesized by what are called fibroblasts that produces collagen. And the picture here is showing you a fibroblast. There are many types of connective tissue. Um, there are loose connective, dense connective, and several specialized connective tissue types. We're gonna go through each of them separately. Once again, make sure that you are paying attention to the pictures on the side so that you know how to identify these different tissue types. So the first tissue type is loose connective tissue. You can find this type of tissue on areolar surfaces. It also includes reticular, reticular tissue and adipose tissue, which are just specialized types of loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue is the most common type of connective tissue. It contains fibroblasts that are producing those, the collagen. Um, loose connective tissue is important. It holds our organs in place in the form of what's called mesentery. And you can also find it between the skin and the muscle. The fibers of loose connective tissue, of course, are going to be um, collagen, which gives the tissue strength elastin which gives the tissue elasticity and then reticular is just um, connective tissue that joins itself to other tissues in essence dense connective tissue is very fibrous you can find this in tendons and ligaments and it also protects organs such as liver and the kidneys it's composed of very densely packed collagen fibers and so thus it's much thicker and it's much stronger than loose connective tissue there are three types that you have to be familiar with. There is a regular, which you find in tendons and ligaments. Irregular, you can find in the dermis layer of the skin, which is the second layer that's deep relative to the epidermis. And there's also dense elastic connective tissue, which you can find in the arteries and your vocal cords and your trachea and your bronchial tubes, because they need to permit elasticity, for instance, in the arteries, especially um, when blood right, is running or being pumped through them. Reticular tissue is, once again, just a specialized type of loose connective tissue. It's named for reticular fibers. Um, it's basically just these fibroblasts that we call reticular cells that the picture is showing you here. This forms structures of organs such as your lymph nodes and your bone marrow, which are very important structures involved in the lymphatic system. Now we're going to start going through more of the specialized connective tissues, adipose tissue being the first one. This is just fat cells, so adipose tissue in essence stores energy. It's composed of adipocytes. It lines your organs and your body cavities. It's in the hypodermis of your skin. It insulates your body against heat and of course once again provides energy for cellular processes. 
Cartilage is the next, next specialized type of connective tissue. It consists primarily of collagen and elastic fibers and a ground substance. The matrix of cartilage is produced by chondroblasts. And so in order to make the distinction excuse me, between chondroblasts and chondrocytes, chondroblasts, when they become embedded in the lacunae, they become mature cartilage cells called chondrocytes. So chondroblasts become chondrocytes, and chondrocytes are just the mature cartilage cells. There are three types of cartilage that you have to be familiar with. Hyaline cartilage is the most abundant. You can find this in the bronchi of the lungs, costal cartilages, the larynx, the nose, the trachea, ends of your long bones, the embryonic skeleton in the fetus. It's basically just providing a smooth surface for articulations, for instance. Fibrocartilage um, is uh, very important. That forms the callus when there's a healing site after a bone fracture. Um, it's also found in the intervertebral discs and your knee joint and, of course, your pubic symphysis. And the fibrocartilage functions in providing support and rigidity. Elastic cartilage um, helps maintain the shape of areas. You can find this in your auditory tubes and your external ear, which is called the auricle, and also your epiglottis. Bone is the next type of specialized connective tissue. Bone is interesting in that the extracellular matrix becomes calcified. Unlike cartilage, bone is mineralized connective tissue that functions in support and protection, but also calcium and phosphate storage. And bone marrow, of course, is held in bone. The cells of bone tissue are your osteoblasts that produce new bone, or the osteoid. Osteocytes are osteoblasts that turn into osteocytes, and then these osteocytes send out cytoplasmic extensions into the new bone or the canali canali The osteoclasts, um, unlike the osteoblasts which produce new bone, osteoblasts or osteoclasts, excuse me, dissolve bone. All right, blood. Blood is important because it supplies oxygen and nutrients to tissue. And of course, our bodily processes cannot function without the help of oxygen, which gives our body the ability to make ATP, which is very important for cellular processes. It also controls the body's pH and it regulates your body electrolytes. Components of blood include erythrocytes, which are red blood cells, leukocytes, which are white blood cells, thrombocytes are your platelets, and it's 55% made of plasma. And plasma is where proteins are gonna be located, the enzymes are gonna be located, um, any other blood component is located in the plasma. Um, of course, blood is found inside your blood vessels. A lymph is just this colorless fluid that contains lymphocytes. Here we have a picture of a lymphocyte. Lymph is part of the lymphatic system and of course has roots in the circulatory system as well, right? Because it's returning excess fluids back to your bloodstream. All right, so we're moving on to muscle tissue. Muscle tissue is, in essence, soft tissue that gives your muscles the ability to move, um, or your body, for instance, the ability to move, your heart the ability to move, and any of your GI tract organs to distend. There are three types. There's skeletal, cardiac, and smooth, and we're going to go through the differences between each. Skeletal muscle is, of course, striated. It's also multinucleated. It functions in the movement of the skeleton, so it's found attached to your bone. And it's important to note that it is under voluntary control. So you are voluntarily moving your leg muscles. Cardiac muscle is striated as well, like skeletal muscle, but it's also branched, and it's also uninucleated, and it has what are called intercalated discs. Cardiac muscle you only find on the wall of the heart. It basically pumps blood through the heart, so it's under involuntary control. Smooth muscle is the last muscle tissue type. It's not striated. It is also uninucleated, like cardiac muscle. But you can find smooth muscle in the blood vessels and, of course, organs of your digestive system. So it's found in arteries, in the veins, in the stomach, in the intestine, gallbladder, and the urinary bladder. And it's also under involuntary control. The last tissue type is nervous tissue. There's really only one type of nervous tissue and it is the main tissue component of the nervous system. Nervous tissue is very important in that it regulates our body control and our body's activities. There are two uh, cell types for the nervous system. 
They're neurons and glial cells. It is the neurons that transmit nerve impulses. There are, in essence, two types. There are sensory and motor neurons. They're all characterized by a cell body, a dendrite, an axon, and axon terminals with a synapse. Some neurons are myelinated, and of course myelination of an axon um, allows for a faster um, propagation of a signal. Not all neurons, however, are myelinated. Glial cells are the most abundant cell type in the nervous system. Their function is to, in essence, support neurons as well as other processes. Um, some glial cells include your astrocytes, which basically form the blood-brain barrier, which is incredibly important because that keeps pathogens from entering your, your brain. And of course, if a pathogen did enter your brain, it can, it can ultimately uh, result in horrible things happening. Oligodendrocytes are um, glial cells that um, basically result in forming myelination for axons in the central nervous system. Microglia or microphages and Schwann cells are basically um, involved in myelination of axons in the peripheral nervous system. Okay, and so that is everything for histology. I really hope this helped you.